the endeavor to engage human resources effectively has remained one of the foremost challenges through the history of organizational management. Increasing staff productivity directly contributes to achieving organizational goals, a key to which is ensuring high motivation and morale. Over the years, modern corporate organizations have felt the compulsions of the competitive talent market. People are the only assets in a knowledge organization like PwC. We therefore have, uh, you know, an enormous amount of focus on uh, how we deal with people, how we manage them, what sort of performance management systems that we have, what sort of upward feedback we have. It's necessary uh, because it's an extremely competitive environment for uh, people right now. Uh, there is a war for talent, it's a real war. And uh, if we actually cannot take care of our people, um, you know, we'll have attrition rates which will make it uh, extremely difficult for us to you know, do what we want to do, which is to serve our clients and be profitable in the bargain. To find human resources sufficiently committed to work for inclusive growth of the poor in government schemes, ensuring their rights and entitlements is difficult. It is even more challenging to find professionals to work in rural settings far away from cities and lacking in basic amenities. Therefore, in rural development projects, having a well-designed human resource strategy is of the utmost importance to register impact. There is scientific evidence to show that corporations or organizations including NGOs and governments that have invested on people and that have good HR practices have always done better. Sri Lanka's Community Development and Livelihood Improvement Project, locally known as Gemi Darya, and Tamil Nadu's Empowerment and Poverty Reduction Project, locally known as Pudu Vadavu Project, are widely seen as successes. This can be substantially attributed to the implementation of innovative HR practices. These projects empower the poor by promoting their own institutions, such as self-help groups, often known as SHGs, federations and village companies, acting as forums to strengthen local voice in decision making. Staff members would adopt a facilitation role rather than a top-down approach, creating an environment for people to come forward. From 2004 to December 2010, Gemi Darya worked on implementation of many HR practices while spreading its reach from 60 to 1,000 villages working with more than 2 million beneficiaries. The Pudu Vadavu project is currently working in more than 4,000 villages. The leadership of these projects managed to create a unique culture of transparency, honesty and mutual trust. All staff and beneficiaries form the Gambiri family. All are bound by the great ethics. The staff advocates the ethical framework to the communities by practice, by behavior. Their performance is assessed by objectively verifiable agreed targets. Management by objectives and management by ethics are mutually reinforcing. No bosses, but leaders and leadership as the driving force. Selecting staff based on attitude and motivation rather than merely cognitive abilities ensuring induction into the project for a largely urban staff and developing need-based training for building their skills and designing a performance management system for aligning staff energies towards organizational goals. Both projects, Gemi Darya and Pudu Vadavu, understood that the recruitment and selection for rural development projects has to be based on different principles. For any uh, project, the staff is very important. The recruitment of staff is the first step. The recruitment has to be transparent and open and impartial. So that has to be ensured by the project team, that everybody believes that recruitment is free and fair. Second thing is that in RD projects, you can't just take the knowledge and skills. You need the attitude of the person, because you have to work with communities. So during the recruitment process, this checking the attitude and interpersonal communication skills has to be tried out. To implement these principles, Pudu Vadavu's management decided to recruit people from the market rather than asking other government departments for staff and deputation. To do this, 
they hired a professional human resource agency through a national bidding process. In Gemi Darya, the staff selection process included a group discussion to test a candidate's ability to work in teams. Observers would watch out for the candidate's inclination to listen to others, build on their ideas and jointly solve problems put before the group. Interview panelists were trained to listen to the candidate's experiences such that they may form hypotheses about how he may function in the organization. After selection tests, candidates were directly sent on a village immersion trip. During this trip, they were given assignments. While candidates completed their tasks, observers noted whether they had reached out to the poor, the women and other marginalized sections of the village community. Over 200,000 leaders from staff and from over 1,000 community had to be given right messages for decision making. Thanks to confident staff, recruited with no undue influence. The board of directors of the foundation was a sheet. It guaranteed opportunity, safety, motivation, and fairness for staff. We have to instill, teach them the skills. There are certain specific skills which are needed. For example, they need to know how to do a PIP in a village and they should know how to form a self-help group. So these aspects are there and the project also goes through different cycles. There are certain different components of the project. So all this, unless you have a good induction program, the person will not know. Unless he knows, he cannot go and empower the people and organize them. Both the projects view training not just as a skill development activity to enhance organizational performance, but also as an essential tool for personal development of the staff. In Pudu Vadavu, training is delivered in modules, namely orientation, motivation and social mobilization, fieldwork, thematic training, exposure visits and need-based training. Well-trained staff in turn train the community. Over 25,000 leaders of poor women were trained on microfinance, organized from head office. This was done through districts and field level staff. Manuals were produced jointly. Our targets were shared targets like family targets, elders, youngsters, peers, all were supporting and also watching and grading each other's performance. We were working producing results. In Sri Lanka's performance management system, key performance indicators of individuals were based on project goals and were developed in consultation with staff members. Mid-year assessments were used as much as to assess performances as to indicate to the employee performance areas demanding improvement. In order to break hierarchy, feedback was taken from peers as well as juniors. This made the decisions of the management less judgmental. System took care of the staff's development, especially of those who did not do well on the assessment system. This is actually a designed for supporting the people, not finding the fault with the people and punish. The people uh, should not have fear on the systems. The, uh, we have seen uh, the performance, the, the general idea, is the performance appraisal is the, the common idea of the people. People fear because of the performance appraisal. It will affect uh, their job, the security of job security and things. So in the PIPDA, we have uh, removed that uh, fear. So this is an objective assessment. This is an uh, assessment uh, done on the, on the focus of development of people rather than uh, judging and taking decision uh, and taking decision to remove the people. So people should not worry about the PIPDA because it is uh, developmental than judgmental. In Tamil Nadu, performances were managed through an in-depth system that also included community's feedback. High performers were motivated through monetary incentives. In a typical government department or uh, company, pay is not related to performance. I mean, you get paid irrespective of the amount of work you do. But here we, like in any good corporate sector, 
we linked pay to performance and I think that was one of the reasons why we did very well. And we even went to the extent of terminating one or two poorest performers in each category, you know, and so, so that we want, not that we wanted to infuse a culture of fear, but we just wanted to infuse a culture of accountability. We wanted people to know that they have to deliver or they can't continue. There was a direct link between overall organizational performance and implementation of human resource strategies. One, there was significant increase in the number of employees who performed well within two years of implementation of the performance management system. Two, financial achievement was almost 100% as opposed to just 60% the year before. Three, cost efficiency of operations improved. Field units mobilized six times the fund as compared to their cost of operations. Four, the organizational culture transformed and an increase in overall efficiency was registered. Employees took initiative, worked longer hours and took leave on fewer occasions. Following suit, Nuton Jibon program of Bangladesh decided to engage a professional HR agency to recruit staff from the open market. Results obtained in Tamil Nadu have influenced HR strategies of the National Rural Livelihoods Mission. Its experience has for example reinforced the view that there ought to be a dedicated sensitive HR architecture. Selection of candidates must be based on attitude and outsourcing to qualify HR agencies for the same is a good practice to have. Even in situations where you don't have trust in uh, the kind of people you might get, like in Afghanistan, we have seen that it is possible to get people uh, through this uh, unbiased selection system and you can train them, you can build the capacity and if your outcomes are very clear and you keep focusing on that, you will deliver huge results. It's been found in Sri Lanka as well in Bihar where there was no hope and we got fantastic results. So I think having trust in the human resource strategy, wherever you may be in Africa or Afghanistan or in Bihar or Bangladesh, if you have objective uh, recruitment selection system and uh, you have a very intense induction program and then you build a system of performance management focus on outcomes uh, where you have peer feedback as well, I am sure you will get great results. Rural development being in a sense a service that is delivered to the poor needs dedicated, productive and well looked after staff. Through the experiences of the Gemi Darya project of Sri Lanka and other similar efforts, it can be said that a way to achieving this is to ensure that people with the right motivation are selected, nurtured and given timely feedback on their performance, aligning their energies with the organization's goals.